Hello, my name is Michelle, and you're listening to Profit is a Choice. On the podcast today are Chandler and Jeremy Quarles of Peach and Pine Interiors. They were on the podcast back in episode 80, where we talked about them building a business together that integrated their family life and their business life. And today we're going to look at a business challenge they're facing. And this is a challenge that many face, the messy middle. What do I even mean by the messy middle? This is the place where you're not where you were, but you're also not where you want to be, AKA the messy middle. And why do I call it that? Because this is the place that we're in the most and that takes perseverance to actually get through. This is the dash, if you will, between when your business starts and when it's done. And this is where your business life is lived. Listen in as we look at this place, this messy middle, and create a new perspective and actually celebrate the climbing up the staircase to business mastery. Every day, empowered entrepreneurs are taking ownership of their company financial health and enjoying the rewards of reduced stress and more creativity. With my background as a financial software developer, owner of multiple businesses in the interior design industry, educator and speaker, I coach women in the interior design industry to increase their profits, regain ownership of their bottom line, and to have fun again in their business. Welcome to Profit is a Choice. Hey, Chandler. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for joining me on the podcast again. Hey, Michelle. Thanks for having us. Oh, you're so welcome. So on the last podcast episode that we all filmed together, we were talking about your business and your life and how you chosen to integrate those and to build a business that allowed you to also both raise your son together and not one of you working and the other in the home or whatever, so that you found a way to kind of integrate it all and are working towards that. I'm sure it's been a very interesting integration during COVID and yeah. a house move that you had in the middle of all of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah I we just piled it all on. I think the last time we talked was before it was, it was before COVID and kind of right as we were prepping to move. And yes, we moved the week before schools, at least before schools shut down here in Tennessee or in, in our area. So kind of right as COVID started, it has been an interesting year, but a very good one in a lot of ways for that work-life integration, because it's kind of been forced on us in a, honestly, in a good way, I a think. Forced reset in a forced reset. A forced reset. Yeah. What was so good about that though, was you had already been very intentional. I mean, that was the thing that we really focused on last time was Mm -hmm. you didn't just try to integrate your home life, your family life, your business life, and just kind of hope it worked out. You guys have been very intentional, even about how you set up your calendars and your schedules, you know, and and Jeremy has other things that he does outside of just the business. So Mm -hmm. really trying to keep up with which days is Chandler doing this, which days is Jeremy doing that and kind of who has kid duty at whatever time or who goes on site. So I know you you had calendars, you had plans and processes, but some of those kind of got changed a bit. Yep. Yeah, we did. Even more during COVID, we had, Jeremy had created colored spreadsheets that um, said, these are the hours we're doing these different things because we weren't leaving the house. He wasn't going anywhere else, but it just helped us to have systems that we knew who was kind of in charge of Judah or taking the lead with our son at what times and just having a plan, having a plan and structure within a very, what could have become a very um, unstructured time with being, you know, homebound and quarantined. We, we kind of created structure for ourselves that allowed us to really get a lot done for our business and take some steps forward. It was about six weeks when things were kind of slower. They really started to pick up in May, but through March and April, things were, just a little slower and we were kind of going, okay, what's this going to look like? And creating those structures and systems gave us kind of purpose and helped us to continue working hard, even though our, maybe our client work was a little bit slower and yeah. still get a lot done even with without any other child care. It was just the two of us and we were tag teaming, but we made it work. So I think, yeah, what I think is so interesting about that too is you were very intentional to build before you went into all that. Mm-hmm. And then even when you got in it and you, and everything kind of got locked down around the country, you were also in a position to almost rethink your schedule. I remember you all mentioning in the designers inner circle, you're one of my coaching clients in there. And I think I remember you mentioning on one of the calls, yes, we had a plan, 
And then we tried to look at the plan and realized we needed to even adjust it again now with all of us home and with what we were doing, because it was almost, I think for all of us, that feeling of we can be a bit unstructured because there are the outside demands on our time shifted like that six weeks of quiet all of a sudden okay what are we supposed to do now mm -hmm. yeah and so i love how you work together and i love how jeremy creates color-coded calendars for you to tell you i know we well that's what i do it's problem solving i i because i would say okay i know i need to be you know getting x y and z done and um i want to use my time more wisely and i want to and we were kind of trying to make sure i was diligently incorporating the miracle morning that you talk about into my work day and starting things off well. So I'm kind of complaining to him about, I just, you know, I feel like maybe I'm a little aimless with my time now that we're in quarantine and the next day he's like, I've created this spreadsheet for you. Tell me what you think of it. <laughs> it's color coded. And I, I'm like, this is actually exactly what I needed, but it helped us. It was like you said, we kind of already had a system. And then as with everyone, everything kind of took a hard right turn in March and we, we said, okay, well, how can we adjust our systems? But because we were already used to kind of tag teaming in that way and figuring out solutions and both working, we were fortunate and that we're used to both working from home and trying to balance all of that. So it was just, okay, how do we do this a little differently? I don't think it was as much of a shock to our system as, as maybe for some people during that time. And so you know, as we're looking at it, one of the things that you mentioned and that that we were talking about there is this refining of systems, this refining of ideas, this refining of where you're going and what you're doing. And so one of the things we want to really focus on on our time on the call today is doing a live coaching call and answering the question kind of what is one of the biggest challenges or what are the biggest challenges that you're facing now? Because your business is evolving, it's growing, it's morphing. You're getting more of the jobs that you want, more of the ideal clients that you want. But it's not just a, you get there and you're done. It, it's, it's a plodding through in some cases to get what you want. As they say, the you know, you don't get to the top by, um, t there's no elevator to the top for success. You've got to take the stairs and you guys are on the stairs here. Right? Feels that way. So, yeah. Yeah. So share with us, if you would, in your business trajectory, in this growth and the scaling that we're working on together, what do you see as the challenge in front of you right now? I think you worded that so well. I wrote down in my notes that we feel like we're getting there, but we're not there yet. We feel like we're like the middle of the staircase and we can look back at the, the steps, you know, that we've already climbed and say, wow, look, look, we're so much further ahead than we were even six months ago, but we see the stairs ahead of us and want to make sure that we are traveling wisely. <laughs> and so do you have any initial thoughts, Jeremy, on kind of what our biggest challenges are right now? We had a big conversation before we called. I think it's, just like what you said, feeling like we're, I think the middle of the staircase case is ambitious, but we're definitely a couple steps ahead of where we were six months ago and a year ago, especially. And we know that it's a long game and you just have to continue doing the right things over a sustained period of time strategically. And so, but sometimes it's hard to know that you're taking those correct steps. And we've thought a lot about Hiring is pretty have, weighing heavily on our minds just as far as like what the right timing of that is and what that would look like. Just some of those sort of like scaling things, a lot of the scaling questions that we've been talking about even in on our inner circle calls have kind of been weighing heavily on our minds and just been circulating to make sure that we're thinking about that properly and taking the right steps for where we are. Another kind of aspect of that is, is you talked about ideal client just a minute ago. And I feel like we have started to get some of true ideal clients. I have a couple of clients I'm working with right now that I feel like this is really an ideal client, but not all of them are yet. We have a lot of great clients, but there are projects that I'm still taking that I kind of hope I won't be taking maybe in six months. Um, we're still kind of leaps and bounds ahead of where I was maybe a year ago with the clients I, I was getting in the calls I was getting and the projects I was taking, but it just feels like we're still, we're just kind of, like I said, getting there, but not there yet um, with really making sure that all the projects we're working on are that ideal 
client. And so I think that's just something, again, that's always circulating through our minds and that sometimes we can both get frustrated with because we see what it could be. We see where we could be as a business and we're just not, we're not there yet. But I also think it's a process and we know that. So it, it is. So, so I want to throw out a couple of ideas to you, some ways to reframe it or to additionally frame mm -hmm. it, right? Because there's nothing wrong with the way that you just described that to me. Um, so I don't want to make it seem like you're describing it incorrectly, sure. but I want to say to you, there's more than one way to look at it. Just like we, you would take any vantage point. Um, I saw on the news today, some pictures of the devastation. We are right a day after the big hurricane has hit down in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I saw some pictures of like before and afters. And it was interesting because there was a building with all the windows blown out or a good portion of the windows. And I saw like four or five different pictures where people were standing in different locations, mm. taking a picture of that building. And so sometimes we think there's just one way to look at something, yet we might need to walk around the building mm -hmm. to kind of look at it differently and to see it a little mm -hmm. differently. So I want to take you kind of on a journey to walk around and look at some things in your business just so that you understand. So number one, um, I want to acknowledge what I call the muddy middle. Mm -hmm. And I think you're in the muddy middle. And that's not a bad place to be. But when you kind of recognize I'm in that muddy middle, you know how it makes you feel like there's a lot of work to be done and it's muddy. Like our neighbors right now are putting in a sprinkler system and they know they're going to be putting in and resodding their entire yard. And the whole, because they know that they weren't as careful digging up. It is, we're in Georgia, it is red clay and red mud in their entire yard. They are in the muddy mud. Mm. That is how we feel, right? When we're in this position. Now they know, they look forward, they know that the yard will be fantastic with a sprinkler system and sod and everything. It's coming, but they're not there yet. And there's a lot of work to be done in the trenches, in the mud. We just had rain, they filled up, they got to go back and let it dry out. You know what I mean? Think about it from a construction standpoint. Mm -hmm. Well, you're in that same place because you're building your business. Mm -hmm. So you're in the trenches, it's a little muddy, and that's where we are. That's where we have to do the work so that we can get onto the other side. So one thing to be excited about is that you're reaching the muddy middle. Hmm. So instead of looking at it and going, this is weird, or I'm in the middle and it feels yuck, I want you to start acknowledging that you're there because it's the work that you do there that helps continue to build the solid foundation for everything that comes behind it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. The second thing that I want to say to you is when you're starting to get these ideal clients, there's a timeline where you're working out those non-ideals. And so there is this middle ground, which again, muddy, because you're starting to get the ideal, which then almost highlights the non-ideals more. Totally. Right. And so use that as something to help you to then write down because it may have been that those that you took that are no longer your ideal were ideal when you said yes to the job because your views changed, your ideas changed, you're a couple of steps higher in the stairwell now. So number one, we acknowledge that they were ideal when we took them, but they are no longer ideal for where you're going. Mm -hmm. That gives you that ability to kind of do the bless and release that I talked mm -hmm. about. Work it through, finish it up, honor and acknowledge what they were there for and what you learned, but then use that information that says they're no longer my ideal and they are, and let that be the guide to get you to the next place. Because it could very well be the one that you're looking at now as your ideal in a year may not be again, mm. because you're growing. And as you grow, your clients are growing with you all the time. Mm. Just recognizing that this is part of the path up to where you want to be or to whatever you want it to look like, it's easier to say, I'm just on the path. I'm working it through. Another thing I wanted to mention to you is sometimes when we're starting off, you know, when we started working together, you, we all start ha almost having these, we, we capture the low hanging fruit when we're working on our business. And so we might have big strides and big momentum and some huge gains and big wins all at the beginning. And that's good. But then the work becomes 
a little more slow sometimes. It becomes that one degree of work. It becomes that one step. It's, it's not always huge leaps and bounds the entire way through the process, right? Mm -hmm. So some of that comes at the beginning and then all of a sudden it almost feels like I'm taking two steps back and then three steps forward. But that's okay. That's where we learn and that's where we refine. Think about um, Judah, your son. He's learning. He's going to get it right and then he's going to get it wrong. And then he's going to get it right again and go a little further and then he's going to fall down. And then he's going to get up and go a little further. It's the back and forth that actually builds it into our subconscious and makes us own it a little bit more. That's what you're working through right now. Mm -hmm. It's not a all the way up all the time. It, it, it just isn't. We might see some cases of that here and there, or in our mind think that's what it's supposed to be. But you know, in everything, in school and everything else, you get it right, you get it wrong. You get it right, you get it wrong. It's the working it through. What you're doing is you are taking what you know is knowledge and you're moving it down into your expertise. And that's a, that's, that's a path. That's where we get it from our head to our heart and out into our actions. And that takes a little bit of time. So you know a lot, but then taking all of that and putting it into your, moving it down into the heart so that you know what to do and how to do it, when to react. And all of that takes time and experience. And that's what you're gaining right mm -hmm. now. So not to discount any of the way that you described it, because all of that is very, very valid. But to add in, I need to learn to see the beauty and where I am. Mm -hmm and the lessons that I'm learning and where I am. You know, sometimes you see people that do things and you think, oh my goodness, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Equally as important is to see people that are doing things that you don't like and go, I don't want to do that. And so we can't miss that mm -hmm. in this opportunity. All right, one last thing, and then we'll ask you some questions. <laughs> there is the concept that I talked to you all about towards the end of last year called the gap in the gain. And I don't know if you remember this, but I even told you back in November, December, even in my own business, that I was feeling very much like I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not where I thought I would mm. be. And I dwelled on that for a little while. And I can tell you the longer I dwelled on I'm not where I thought I should be, the worse I felt the more that I looked at my business almost with some contempt, mm. even though I loved what I was doing, I didn't, you know, all of those things were great, but in my mind, I had some ideal set up and I would not yet reached it. And one of my friends in my mastermind group said to me, she, she told me about this concept of the gap in the game. And what she said was, um, that in her understanding from, from the reading that she had done, if we're always looking at the gap, the difference between where we are and where we want to go, we are always going to be behind. And that leads to depression. And so we've got to look at it and acknowledge it for where we're going and what we want to do. But we can't always just look at the gap, the gap between where we are and where we're going or what we know and what we don't know. We have to equalize it by looking at the gain. And when we look at the gain, we look back to where we were and then where we are today. That entire picture is a more clear understanding. And I wanna encourage you that if you are in your muddy middle, if you are in the middle or two steps up or two steps down or wherever you are in the staircase, right? That we have looked at. I want you to look forward at where you wanna go. That's where we can be encouraged. That's where we can have inspiration. But what we do when we look back at gain, what we've already done, that's where we build confidence. Mm -hmm. You will not build your confidence only looking forward. You will always feel less than. You will always feel like I haven't attained. You will always feel like something's missing if you only look that direction. When you look back at what you've done, what you've accomplished, where you've been, how far you've come, all of those things, that's what builds your confidence to honestly take the next step to where you want to go. And so I want to encourage you when you're in the middle and everybody listening who's in the middle like this, sit down and write down where you were, where you've come from. We sometimes forget the journey, right, of where we've been and are only looking ahead. And so I want you to look at your business 
balance. You also have been in business how long? Three Four, years? Three, well, I guess only a little over three. <laughs> it's 2020, you can't forget that. I think a little over three years since yeah, or, we haven't yeah, been, yeah. I haven't worked for someone else too, so yeah. yeah. Okay, so somewhere between three and four years. I mean, for real, look at what it is you think you want. You got a journey. I mean, this is a journey. This is a marathon. This isn't a sprint. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't have that quickly. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying we also have to give ourselves some grace for the journey. Yeah. And because if we get as far in the next three years as we've come in the last three years, that'll be a good sign. <laughs> right. I mean, and let's let's look at other things. In the middle of all this, you've had a child. Mm -hmm. You've changed to a new house. Right. I mean, you've had other large events. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you're not one track business only. Yeah. Okay. So with all of that reframing or additional framing, now tell me how you feel about the challenges ahead. <laughs> I feel like there's a good life lesson in the looking back. Yeah. I think that's really good for me because sometimes I can look back almost, sometimes I don't want to look back because I'm almost embarrassed of where I used to be. Uh, that's, I think I am such a forward thinker. Um, and sometimes I go, I don't even want to think about what, you know, like what I was, the business choices I was making three years ago. Cause that's, you know, that's embarrassing. I wasn't doing things right. Instead of going, wow, look how far I've come. Look how far I've come. Yes. Glass half full instead of glass half empty. And I think that's also just encouraging because it, it feels like I can just sort of be, it, it breeds contentment to think of it that way yes. and go, we're yes. where we're supposed to be. That we're supposed to be in the messy middle right now. We're not supposed to be. And the messy middle lasts longer than any of the rest yeah. of it. I mean, think about it. From the time you start to the time you end your career, everything in the middle is the messy middle. Yeah. It's kind of like when they say, you know, when somebody's died and they put the headstone up and it gives the date they were born and the date they died. Life is the dash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're in the dash. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also encouraging because everybody that means everybody's in the messy middle to some extent. Some people are further down or like they're a little closer to the end of it, but, but we're all figuring stuff out. Um, breeds, yeah. Thinking yeah. about it that way breeds contentment and also like eliminates comparison to some extent. Cause yeah, it does. I, and again, I'm telling you, I do the same thing. And that's why at the end of last year, I, I think to yourself about this too. Again, it's not saying you need to stay where you mm -hmm. are. You can absolutely keep moving forward. But don't you know that there are many new designers who would love to have the business that you yeah. have? It's a good and so, it, 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 again, it's affirming where you've come because that builds the confidence that is going to propel you for where you want to yeah, go. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, I even do that in my parenting. <laughs> I do. I do, really. Yeah. Um, I, I pray a lot of grace over that. Thankfully, my kids are grown. I'm still praying grace over that. Um, I do it in my spiritual life. I do, we do it in our family finances. <laughs> look where we were. Look where we're always trying to measure and, and to move ahead in our lives. Most of us with our character, with everything. And sometimes while it could be, I acknowledge painful to look back because of where we were or what we believed or what we were doing or how things looked or the choices we were making, seeing that gain. Yeah. It does make you feel like, okay, I can keep going. Okay. This isn't so bad because you're not still stuck back where you were mm -hmm. you moved up the staircase. Do you ever, do you have any practices that you do to like celebrate that as part, especially as a small business? I mean, as a sink, like, you have people that work for you, but it's your business. So it's not like you have, I feel the same way sometimes. It's not like I have a boss that's going, good job, like performance review telling me that things are going well, you know. Um, you can start giving you performance reviews. I don't. You can start, that's right, Jeremy. Let's do that. We'll do some. I don't know that I want your performance reviews all the time. We're going to have to trade out business coaching for marriage counseling. Yeah. If we start that's exactly right. Um, um, I do have some practices to do that. So one of the things that I do is I set goals in my business. Mm -hmm. I set a high goal and then I set intermediate goals because right. We don't go usually from again, zero all the way up. We're meeting certain things. You know what some of mine are is honestly taking my family out to dinner. If I hit this goal, we're all going to go out to have dinner or we're going to cook a special dinner here mm -hmm. 
or we're going to do a certain thing. Um, one time I had a, a really big goal and I went and bought a bottle of champagne mm -hmm. and we all had a glass of champagne and celebrated mom hit that goal. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of things like that. I, one time it was there a pair of jeans that I wanted that I normally wouldn't spend the money on. And I thought if I hit the goal, I'm going to go buy those mm -hmm. jeans. Sometimes it is, I will allow myself, then I'll have, always have to be about money or cost, right? That's why to me it's about um, having dinner with my family or doing something like that. Um, sometimes it'll be, I'm going to take an afternoon off and go sit on the back porch with a friend. Mm -hmm. If I can hit this goal, I'm going to go build community in the backyard or I'm going to do something else. And so I, I literally say, it, when and if this happens, here's what I'm going to mm -hmm. do. Here's what I'm going to celebrate. Here's what I'm going to get. Um, and again, it doesn't all have to be money-based. It usually is what inspires you and what makes you feel good. And for me, it's about being with my family, my, my grown sons and my husband, um, being with my girlfriends and hanging out, having conversation and being chill, taking an afternoon off and going for a walk or doing something that normally I would be during work that feels almost like I'm being treated. Yeah just because I'm not sitting in my office at my desk. And so I just set those up. And when I hit it, I'm like, we're going, yeah. we're going to do it. But, but I would say it's not always waiting for the big things to celebrate. It's celebrating the steps. And that's what I want to say to you. If we're only going to celebrate when we get to the top of the staircase, then it's always like that carrot hanging out there and we get tired and we get exhausted. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's all the little stuff. I want you to celebrate when you go up three steps. Yeah. It can be a small celebration. It can be the two of you do a high five and you go out and get lunch. Yeah. It, it could be, you're going to turn on music, dance around the kitchen. It doesn't have to be huge. It could be just a, we're going to get together and scream and yell and get excited for a minute. Mm -hmm. It's recognizing the steps. That's what's most important here. Because if you don't do that, you're constantly having to look back to see now, where did I come from? So I want you to celebrate each step. Sometimes I had a client this week that had a real, we talked on Monday. She's a one-to-one -one client with me and she had a really tough uninstall happening on Wednesday, like really tough, mm. like where things had gone really bad and it needed to be uninstalled. And she had a pit in the middle of her stomach on Monday. She was making it right. Everything was going to be okay. It was just painful. Mm -hmm. Right. And if anybody's been in business long enough, they're going to have that. And so I started talking to her on Monday about, I don't want you so focused on Wednesday. I want you to focus on Thursday. Let's put your mind at th on Thursday. This will be done on Thursday. We're going to celebrate because no matter what happens on Wednesday, we're done. We're focusing on Thursday because if you focus on Wednesday, you're going to feel sick. You're going to feel ill. You're going to have a hard time. It's going to be negative. I want you to start being excited for Thursday. Thursday's coming. Thursday's coming. Thursday's coming. And she sent me an email. Today is Thursday. She sent me an email last night that said, it is done. It is over. It went fine. And tomorrow's Thursday. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we have to start looking at some of these things. We celebrated seriously Chandler. We put up a celebration from Monday to Thursday just to get through something that she was dreading. Yeah. And so I say, build that in, build it in. We have to, when we're self-employed yeah. because nobody's going to do an attaboy for right. us. I think that's really good for us too. Cause as spouses that work together too, I think we can sometimes work ends up feeling really serious. And for goodness sake, we're making people's house pretty. That's not really that serious. It should be fun. And I think building in, I mean, it's important, but it's not somber. So we should be building in celebration, I think more. I think that marks it too. So that even when you are looking back, in the Bible, they would do like stones of remembrance to, and they would look back and say, you know, what are these there for? And it's like, that's what that reminds us what the Lord did here or whatever. That's so right. Doing those sorts of things like going out to dinner or getting a bottle of champagne, like you remember those things and right. what they're tied to. And that helps you looking back to see, look at where we were, look at how far we've come. And kind of like you said, like, breeds contentment and encourages you to continue moving forward. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll take that even one step further. Um, you know, my fa- one of my favorite books of the Bible is Joshua, mm-hmm. and that's what my business is named off of. And that's where they're taking the stone. One of the places they take the stones of remembrance right. from the middle <laughs> and, and, and move yeah. them forward. One year for Christmas, I gave my sons a stone and a journal as a reminder of all the things that God had done for them in the last year and asked them to look at that stone and then to put the journal beside it. And as things happen throughout the year, document them Mm -hmm. because it's called spiritual amnesia when you go and you can't remember. And that was the whole, that was the whole exercise here was don't forget what God's done for you. And I would say it's the same type of thing in our business. We forget where we've come. We forget what we've already accomplished. We forget what we've already done. Um, And if that is super important to you, get a stone and get a journal. Mm -hmm. And even if the celebration is just to write it in the journal, that is enough of a celebration. Mm -hmm. Then at the end of the year, you pull it out and you can read for the last year. Here's everything that happened. Even if you started it today, you have four months of remembering before you hit the end of the year. Another thing that I, you probably heard on a prior podcast is in my family, we do a New Year's Day dinner at our home. Now this year is getting ready to be the first year that it's more than the four of us because the rule is you have to be engaged to marry for anybody to join. And I have an engaged son, so this is gonna be our first year with five people. So it'll be interesting to invite somebody in. But we've been doing this since our kids were tiny. And we do a family fondue and then in our family fondue, because what a fondue is a slow meal. It's not a sit down and eat. It's a slow meal. And in the fondue, we all go through and talk about our highs for the year, our lows for the year, where we saw God at work for the year. And then we talk about our goals for the next year. So each of us talk about our independent goals and we set family goals as a family. Where do we want to go on vacation? What experiences do we want to have? And we wrote them down and we kept up with it. And every year the boys are still, I mean, they're grown men and they're like, we need to do our, our, you know, event and we need to talk about it. And we all get to remember. And that's a good time to bring out that notebook Mm -hmm. to remind yourselves of what the business has done, how far you've come and then turn the page and write, we're all going to be excited to turn this page, turn it to 2021 sit it with the stone and then make note for next mm-hmm. year. It's good. It's a good idea. Yeah. I need to do that. Just try it. I think you'll be impressed. Yeah. You'll, you'll see. Just try it for four months. And then if you don't like it, you can be done. Just try it. All right. So let me ask you this, knowing where you are in the muddy middle, knowing that there's not just one direct challenge in front of you, but the, I, I would say the biggest challenge is just continued growth and staying the course. Yes. And I don't want us to underestimate Holding on in the middle is a challenge in and of itself because it takes on different forms all the time. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what would you like to happen for the next step? Not for the whole big picture, Mm -hmm. right? What would you like to happen just for the next step to move you up one floor on your staircase? Hiring. I'd say hire. Yeah. The biggest thing that comes to mind is hiring our first employee, which, um, we, we've started, I mean, we have, we're saving for, um, with profit first and we have been all of the work that you're doing right now in designers in our circle with us about hiring and about employees and all of that has been perfect timing because, um, I think hopefully sometime in the next, I'd say beginning of next year, it's probably what we're looking at beginning of 2021 um, a junior designer slash assistant for me. And, uh, part of that is also that we are hoping to start growing our family again, probably next year and be great to have someone else on hand whenever we have another newborn at some point. And so, but that's been, I think heavy on our minds, but also feels like that kind of overwhelming that first, oh my goodness, we're going to be responsible for someone else's income. (laughs) Uh, that feels overwhelming. So that's, but that, I think that as far as like looking forward in a positive way to what the next step is, I think that's that's the next big, the next big step. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about that for a minute. 
So a couple of things, what we've been working on in the inner circle to get ready, just for those that aren't in there, we have been working on what are the functions of your company? We've been talking about a job description, how it fits in. Um, we've been talking through and working through how to create onboarding plans, how to hire them, all those good things. Um, how we're going to figure out what to pay them. You talked about the profit first. I usually have you set aside three months of their salary before you hire them. Mm -hmm just to make sure that you've got that bandwidth to onboard them and train them and take some time away from what you're doing without impacting the, the full on finances of the company. We talk about making some of their work billable versus non billable so that they can pay for themselves with the hire you need to make profit on them. We've done a lot of that work. I know you're working through all that. Um, do you feel at this point that I mean, junior designer, how junior do you want? Do you know that yet? I don't think we know that yet. I think I'm, yeah, I don't feel like I have my, I don't feel like I have the person in my, like the skill set, the, uh, the avatar. Yeah. Um, exactly. Okay. So here's what I would say to you. I want you as you're building the avatar, right? For this ideal employee, because it works very similarly to ideal client. I want you to not think about where you are now, Chandler, but I want you to think about what you need if you need to take a 12-week maternity mm. leave. I've, I've helped a couple of other designers do this where they're set, they said, I need to have my business poised to continue to build my family. And that's what we tried to do was we were planning in advance for what are the needs of the company when you – let's say step out in some capacity for 12 weeks. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be all the way out, but you may, you're going to be in a, in a, um, a reduced capacity, no doubt. What is the skill set? Because you may find that you need more than a junior designer. Yeah. And it may not necessarily be a senior designer. It just might be designer, but you're going to see, right? I mean, there are levels in all of that. Sometimes when we get junior, though, if we're not careful, we get so junior that you still can't step out. Mm, we great. need to create this in such a way that if you were to say, for example, for the first four weeks, I can't, especially with COVID and, you know, who knows where we're going to be in a year. But let's say that maybe in your mind, you thought about it this way. And the, for the first four weeks, the first month after having my baby, I'm not going to any houses. Mm -hmm. So if there's any on site that is design related, then it, they have to be able to go on site and translate that. There are some things that it might be Jeremy starts to take over mm -hmm. with project management and some of those things where he could be on site, right? So it, in some ways you have two resources here. You've got Jeremy mm -hmm. and you have this new person. So looking at, of what your current work that could be handed off, what might be moved to Jeremy that you spend this time building Jeremy up in? Mm. And then what do you need? Maybe it's, you need somebody who can draw. Mm. Maybe you need somebody who can um, do sourcing and selections for you. Maybe somebody who does procurement management. Maybe that's Jeremy. Look at what you do. I would say Chandler, start with writing your full job description. Mm -hmm. So instead of focusing on theirs, let's focus on yours. What is, what are everything that you do mm -hmm. and which things would you be um, not able to do as easily during a maternity? Mm -hmm. And now which of those things could, that you maybe could not do, what could go to Jeremy based on the conversations you guys have been having about how he's going to be more active or other things he might want to take on and which things do you need a designer? Then you can look at that list and ask yourself, what is the highest level person that I could hire to do that for the amount that I have? To pay? Okay. That's good. Do as far as figuring out what, I know we've talked about this some in, in inner circle, but what an appropriate salary is for different levels in our area. How do people usually go about kind of making sure that that's accurate? Yeah. Good question. So one, you can go on to some of the different job boards and you can start looking around at what other people are hiring for an equal skill set. Mm -hmm. So before we even look at amounts, we got to look at the job description. Mm -hmm. 
But I want you to think about compensation broader, deeper, and wider than just money because yeah. it's a it's about more than money. So when we are compensating people, we're compensating them in a multitude of ways. One is money. One could be, um, and when I say money, I mean just like, let's say straight salary, yeah. some type of salary. If it's a sales position, we may have some commissions. If it is a, just an employee that is not in sales, sometimes they get um, some percentage or some bonus based on company profitability. So everything doesn't have to be sitting in salary. There may be a stipend for healthcare, or if you guys are in a healthcare plan, it could be vacation time. It could be flexibility on the job, you know, being able to step in and out. There are so many other ways that we come to, it could be education. Maybe you pay for them to take a course or go to an event or go to High Point or whatever. Some of those things become benefits in the job that they like. It could be cell phone reimbursement. You know, if they're using their cell phone while they're on your business, they're getting a cell phone reimbursement. Well, they were gonna pay for the cell phone anyway. So then that becomes a, a more compensation for them. So I, I just want you to think deeper and wider and it's not just, the, the money matters, mm -hmm. of course, but there are other things. I know I would much rather be in a job that was flexible, that paid a little bit less than one that paid a lot more that was so rigid Felt like I couldn't even go to the dentist if I needed to. And they don't see you after hours and all the weekends to get mm -hmm. your clean. So, you know what I'm saying? There's something to be said for that. So what I would do is let's say that you find the rate for a junior designer and I'm going to throw out, you know, based on where you are in the country and nobody call me and start freaking out here. You can sometimes see between 35 and 40,000 as a beginning mm -hmm. junior designer. Mm -hmm. Certainly in some markets that could be higher or lower, but that's kind of what we're seeing kind of that, let's see, 35,000, that's around what, 1750 to 20 bucks an hour, somewhere in that range. Um, and that's pretty normal. What I would also suggest is you start lower because you can always go up. I have had multiple people come to me and they hired somebody and they're paying them 25, 35, 45, 50 dollars an hour thinking that they had XYZ skill set that they put on their resume and the person doesn't really know it. And now it is costing them so much. Whereas if they had started a little lower and then seen what they could do after 90 days, they can you can always go up in your pay. You cannot go down without causing yeah. So I would say you can also go in and say, I will start you at 1750. And then as your work progresses, as we see what you can do, there is room for upward mobility. Like you can move up. We're not keeping you stagnant, but I would, I would hesitate to go super high unless you have seen a proven track record of what they could do. Um, another thing in the hiring process, and we have a couple of different podcasts um, on here about hiring is creating a hiring process. It's not a, I'm going to meet you one time and you're done. You could have them come in and give them a design. I mean, you may have to pay them for half a day's worth of work. Sometimes they do that. Have them come in and do work. Have them come in and shadow you. See what they do. Give them, um, give them like an idea of this is the aesthetic or this is what happened. What would you build for me? Draw me out. You tell me you can do drawings. Show me what you've done. Ask for examples of the work. Don't let them say to you, well, I can't show you any pictures. I work for another company that's under their portfolio. Okay, cool. You can't do that, but you can draw it for me now. Draw it, show me, give them items, see if they can actually do the work. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can always go up in how you pay them. You just can't go down. Yeah. And again, this is why I want you to think about what you're doing and what you want to do and what you need to handle. We have two job descriptions, right? We've got the external job description that we use to hire, which is a little bit more pretty and flowery. And do you want to do this? And do you want to, but internally we have a job description that says, here's what you do. Here's how you do it. Here are the standard operating procedures. There's more detail internally. And we want that to be so clear. Remember, clear is kind. And so the more clear we are with them, the more they know what to do, they know what to expect, when to get it done, 
when you, how you want it done, what you want it to look like. That's what's going to ease your mind to be able to take the time off to have a baby. Because if they don't really know what to do, I talk about my five E's all the time. We educate them, we equip them, we set the expectations, we empower them, and then we encourage them. And so we want them to have those five E's done before you step out. Mm -hmm. Because then that means they know what to do, they know how to do it, the level to do it, when to do it, and they're empowered to make decisions around it, whatever it is. That's good. It sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. And you know what that means? It means this is where we have to be intentional with the hiring. Mm -hmm. Because if we're not, and we hire out of, I need to do it, I need to do it quick, just get somebody on board. I'm so exhausted. I'm so tired. I'm so busy. When we hire them under that kind of pressure or duress almost, we don't have the time to set them up properly. Mm -hmm. I, I described it on the inner circle call the other day. And I had another client tell me, she's like, Michelle, she's like, I've always heard this. And I always thought, yeah, yeah, you're right. She said, but the way you describe this made me catch my breath. And what I said was, it would be like you inviting somebody to your home for the weekend and not being prepared for them to come. The guest room isn't made up. The bathroom is dirty. You haven't bought groceries. There's no plan for a meal. You have no outings, no nothing. And they show up because you invited them and you are so unprepared. How do they now feel in your home? Do they feel welcome? Do they feel a part of it? Are they excited to be there? What would they tell their friends and would they come back? And so if we are inviting someone into your company and we are not doing those things, it is the equivalent of inviting a, a best friend or a, somebody that you care about and being completely oblivious to them being mm -hmm. there and making them just like you're on your own. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Yeah. I mean, that's miserable. Yeah. But that's what we do in and hiring. It, I've been in that position as the, as the employee before I know how that feels. It's, it's yeah. horrible. And, and that, that is, it happens because we hire during overwhelm. We hire without a plan. We hire without an onboarding process, a training process, a follow-up process. We don't have any of that done. And we just bring somebody in and we're like, good luck, dude. Hope it all works out. It makes me think of the commercial where the, you remember the, um, the grandmother and the grandfather show up like in the taxi cab and they get out and they walk up to the house and the mom and the dad hand them the kids and, and jump in the taxi cab and go off. And they're like, don't leave me with the babies. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of thing. It's like, you think you're coming for one thing and you're just left to your own devices. Mm -hmm. And so this work that you're doing for six months, um, we talk about in inner circle all the time, the difference between important urgent and significant. Mm -hmm. And I want you to see this is hard work, but this is significant work. The work that you do preparing for that employee will pay off like crazy because number one, it'll help you get the right employee because you know exactly what you're hiring mm -hmm. for. And then it will help you onboard them. It will help you equip them and empower them and have them ready to do the work because you've done mm -hmm. the work. Now you're prepared and they're prepared. And that is a much different scenario than I'm out on Indeed looking for somebody and I don't even know what I need them to do, but just come in and help. Yeah, totally. Also, I can't imagine how badly that could go with clients involved if you have somebody <laughs> that, isn't, that doesn't know what they're doing, um, interfacing with clients. That yeah. kind of gives me. On your behalf. Yeah on, yeah, on my behalf. That makes me anxious just thinking about that. Well, okay, so here's another thing that I would tell you that, that kind of the next step after you've done some of this work, here's the next step that I'm going to help you do. And that is to create communication templates mm -hmm. so that when they do communicate on your behalf, you know what they're communicating, how they're communicating, and it matches your plan. Mm -hmm. And so having templates for communication set up, here's how we give this information. Here's how we get that information. They now can go into a Google doc and pull it down and fill in the missing um, information and send it out. And you know, it's coming from your brand versus you having to sit and reread everything and change the tone and change. You, you create it and set the tone for mm -hmm. them. And then the cool thing is, because see, what we're really building here for both of you, we've talked about this before. You're trying to have an impact and a legacy. Mm -hmm. 
And when we're on that business needs hierarchy, we're doing impact and legacy. That means we're building the brand. We're not building Chandler. We're not building Jeremy. We're building the Peach and Pine Home brand, right? And when we're building the brand, then it, it shouldn't matter if somebody interacts with your company, if they interact with you or with Jeremy or with any hire, they should feel the same mm -hmm. way. And that's, that's what you start to build when we get in that order. You know, there's sales, profits, and order. That order is where you build the process that no matter how somebody comes in to, to deal with you and talk with you or to interact with your company, they're getting the peach and pine experience. This is where you have to define what does that look like? What does your company culture look like? Very clear on what are the values that you guys are standing on to make sure whoever you're hiring is in alignment with those values yeah. because that's what's going to move you forward up that staircase. If they're not in alignment with the values and all those things, right, and they speak differently and the tone is differently, I promise you when you talk about client interaction, you're going down the staircase instead you know. of that. Yeah. But the more you've defined it, and I'm not talking about being rigid but it's an agreement. So the more you've defined it, the more you live it, the more you build whatever your why and your values are into your processes, it just becomes a natural outflow of what you mm -hmm. do. It's like if you value kindness, you're going to be kind. If you value integrity, you're going to build processes that allow you to be um, and have integrity in all that you do. So it, it's not like hard, it's just being aware is that what we're doing and that how we're acting? Yeah. And, and then it gives that, that employee the ability to say, you know, I really don't want to tell the client that we messed that up, but because we're a company that acts with truth and integrity, we're going to own it and I'm going to admit yeah. to it. And then I'm going to say, we're going to fix mm -hmm. it. I would rather have an employee that knew that I would rather us do that than to lie about it, cheat about it and cover it mm -hmm. up. Make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. So I don't want you to underestimate, I know you're in the middle, but I want you to look at this middle as a beautiful time to construct and build what you're going up with. Think about it. This is what we've been talking about. Think about it as a foundation. If you've got dreams to build way up here, it's going to take a really solid foundation for you to do that. And if those cornerstones are not set, if there are cracks in that foundation and you're trying to build up, you may get so high, but then it's going to come down. So the more you spend getting this part right, the easier it gets as you go mm -hmm. up. Otherwise, it's going to be an up, down, up, down, knock it down, build it over, redo it, undo it, wrong brick, doesn't match, <laughs> you know, all those kinds of analogies. That it, you're, it's going to look like you just slapped it together versus very planned. You would never go in and design a space in a room and just throw stuff in it and hope it all coordinates. You would start with some solid foundation building for that room, for space planning, for color palettes. You're doing the same thing right now for your business. And, and so I want you to look at all of this as you're designing your business. Mm -hmm. And you have the right to design it. So I don't want you to look at it as, oh, great, I got to go do this. I want you to go, I have the opportunity. We have the opportunity to design this firm. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's great. What do you think about that? It's still a lot of work. Like, it didn't reduce your work. It's really about changing the way you see your work. Yeah. Makes me excited. We've been putting, you know, starting to build the foundation for hiring. But this conversation makes me feel a little more confident because I think I've I've like, okay, I know we have to do that. And we've been, Jeremy's been working hard on our operations document that has things, you know, all in order. And we're, we are building up that salary and our, you know, savings so that we can pay somebody. And we've been thinking about through all of that stuff, but I still sometimes get paralyzed going, that just sounds so overwhelming. Like all the things that could go wrong with, with hiring somebody, but thinking about it again, glass half full about all the things it could do for our business and the way that it can build a foundation for the future. And, it makes me more excited. So it, it goes back to that. Instead of looking at it, that I have to do these things. Yeah. I get to I get to. Yeah. I get to build the business that I want and that I dream of and that serves us and serves others versus mm -hmm. I have to do this stuff. Yeah. Because then that puts it into, you have control over what you're building. Yeah. I mean, listen, you can still do every single thing right. And it go wrong. <laughs> I am not suggesting that it's a, 
you know, a cause and effect every single time. But I at least would like to know if something goes wrong, that I did everything I knew to do and within my power and within my ability. And then if it still goes wrong, I'm going to ask that big question, what can I learn? Yeah. So I don't want fear of that to stop you. I want you to let that fear propel you to say, knowing what I know, seeing what I see, watching everybody else that's sharing their nightmares that are causing this fear, knowing that, what can I do to protect us and to put us in a better situation, knowing that it is never 100% foolproof. Yeah. But I can do all that I can do. It's no different than buying a house. You hope that that inspection caught everything. You hope that you saw everything you needed to see, but you can never be 100% sure. Mm -hmm. So then you ask for faith and trust come in. Totally. And that's exciting too. Yeah, it is. Because sometimes it's really cool to know that there are things that are happening that you didn't plan for and that are outside of your control mm -hmm. and there are blessings. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. I like to look for those too. <laughs> right. Yeah. So is there anything you're not willing to do to take these next steps? I just said sacrifice priori prioritizing our family. I'm okay to build our business slower if it means having Health, work -life healthy work-life balance like we've talked about. I mean, no, there's there's never any perfect balance. There are weeks when we feel like family taking the cake and there are weeks whenever, you know, I'm working really late nine hours to get ready for that meeting or whatever. So I know it's not perfect, but I don't want to look back and go, well, I slaved away 70 hours a week for all those years and here I am. Like I, I don't ever want to slave away 70 hours a week, even if it means uh, building slower. So Okay. So let, let me give you some ideas on how to look at that. I, I may have shared this on the podcast before, but I remember when I took my son to his two-year-old checkup and um, one of the things that the doctor asked me was like, how, what is he eating and how is he eating? And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets. And then he'll turn around and it's broccoli, broccoli, broccoli. And then he'll turn around and it's peanut butter, peanut butter, peanut butter. I'm like, I'm about to go crazy here. And one of the things he said to me was Michelle, he said, when you're looking at your son's diet, what is a healthy diet? I don't want you to look at it for each day. I want you to look at it over a time period of a week because kids tend to go through phases where they're like developing their taste and eating one thing and then eat. You offer it, you make it available, but I want you to, to balance it out over the week or over a two week period. Did he get all that he needed? to grow and survive and all these things over a period of time. Because if he did, it's okay. He said, don't you ever go through a phase where you eat one mm -hmm. thing or do one thing more than you do another and see the balance. And that has been a great lesson for me. And so the same holds true here. In other words, some of this work that you're doing right now to build all of the policies and the procedures and all the things that we've been working on together, mm -hmm. It takes time on top of serving your client. It just does. And so in some of these build moments, it may be that you have a little less time with the family. Yeah. But we're doing them because they're significant because they're going to give you 12 weeks with a family to have a baby. So, you know, that's when we're looking at it over the long haul. It's not 70, 70, 70, 70, 70, and then 70 while you're, out on maternity leave because you have no option. It might be we have spurts of extra at some point where we have to take a little bit of a step back with family so that we can create more time with family later. So I just want you to keep in mind yeah. that sometimes with this extra build, it does take a little extra time when you're also trying to do it with an active client base. Don't mm -hmm. limit yourself because what you're going to do, if you limit too much and you're too stringent, it'll mean that you got to do it later. And so just start thinking of how can I do, and you've given yourself enough time that you're not trying to cram it into a 70 hour week so that you've got time to kind of be very intentional. Let Jeremy build those spreadsheets for you that tells you when you got to go work on it and you guys continue to work on it together because that's what's going to free you up. Listen, if you can build a business where you can take 12 or 13 weeks and have a baby, then you're building a business that you can step out of later to go on vacation. Yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> but it takes intention. It really takes intention. Yeah. 
Jeremy, what do you think about all this? Uh, you know me, it sounds great. <laughs> you already got the color coded pens out. You're ready to go. That's right. I'm ready to, <laughs> I mean, that's, I think you guys are saying the same thing. We want to continue to build and grow, but not at the expense of the things that are important. But there's definitely a give and take with that at different times of the business which we're working through even now in the last two weeks we've had a bunch of family in town and things we haven't been able to work as much Judah got sick Judah got sick and that sort of thing and now the next two weeks you have two huge design plans and it's going to be slammed and that's just kind of it ebbs and flows but just keeping the focus on the important things and looking at it over the period of time is what's important Here's an exercise that I usually have you do at the end of the year. And so I don't know if you all remember when I had you all do it, but I said, write down what is important to you not to miss. What is that? Is it two dinners a, a, not a week as a family? Like, what is it that makes you feel balanced? I went through and wrote down what is most important that I don't miss it. Like when you're saying, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to give, what is that? And I started saying I wanted to be able to, this was pre-COVID, um, I wanted to be able to go out at least once every two weeks with my girlfriends and have dinner. I wanted to be able to have at least two meals with the family or whoever's here that, that I cook in the house, <laughs> that I cook with joy. I actually had to write that down. Meaning I don't want to like be throwing hot dogs on the grill because I'm exhausted. I wanted to have two meals that I could plan out and with joy and, and be relaxed and actually enjoy the process of putting a meal on the table. Cause I like that when I don't feel stressed. So that meant I had to like create non-stress, right? To be able to do it. It might be that once a quarter, I go on a weekend trip with my husband, whatever that is. So I want you to write down, what is it that you're not willing to give up that is super important and that you wanna have time for? And if you write it down, then you can build it into the plan and make mm -hmm. sure that you don't step on top of it with the business. So be, be clear on what it is you don't want to give up or that what, what is it that holds space that you don't want to book on top of. And then everything that you know, go ahead and pre-book pre -book it on your calendar. Mm -hmm. So if you know you want to go on vacation, pre-book it. If you know something's going to happen, go ahead, mark it off and, and save the space. If you know you need to build in two or three hours to build these processes, put it on the calendar and save it. Make it an appointment that you're not willing to give up. So does that at least give you some things to walk away with and move forward and not feel so bad about the muddy middle? Yeah, definitely. Definitely but to feel like you can hold on and move forward actually with excitement and joy. Yeah. You probably feel a lot more in control to build. So my, I think my biggest takeaway is I've got to start seeing more glass half full than glass half empty. Not that, and I love what we do. It's not like I just walk around like Eeyore all the time, but I think I can constantly feel like I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I have more to do. I have more to do. And instead of looking. What are your strengths? What are your strengths in strengths finder? Oh, uh, it's been like, seven or eight years since I've done strength we're, more we're Enneagram, Enneagram people, people. <laughs> um, yeah. um, I'm a okay. three which is the three. Um, I'm a three. Oh, are you okay yeah so I'm a three You're um, get it done build let's yeah. go get it done forward looking yep. always yeah I want to be successful and be perceived as successful and yep. my go-to emotion is shame my go-to emotion is I'm not I didn't do enough or what if I'm not doing enough and or doing good enough or winning enough, or whatever it is. And he's a nine, which is the peacemaker, wants to keep keep the internal peace and the peace with people around him. Nine with an eight. Yeah, so I'm a three as well. Okay. And then, and then you add in under Strengths Finder, I'm a maximizer. I was I remember I was maximizer. Okay. So maximizer says big, big, go, go, more, yeah. more. I like to get things done and check them off. Mm -hmm. so let's add all that into an Enneagram three. Mm -hmm. And it's always like, no matter how great it is, it's not enough. Not enough. That's and in my that. mind, I'm always thinking, I've always thought I didn't even give that a hundred percent. Yeah. Like, gosh, I, I could attain in, in some cases more than the people around me. And in my mind, I still had more to give. I just didn't give it. And it yeah. might not be true, but yeah. it's what I tell myself. That's how I constantly going you know, someone will say, you did a great job. And I'm like, well, outside I say, thank you. And in my mind I go, but I messed that one thing up 
or a, but I could have done more. I could have gone farther. I yeah. yeah. It's always, yeah. that is the, the, the head talk. Yeah. And so again, I'm about 20 years ahead of you, <laughs> 28 years ahead of you. I'm telling you, I've had to take control of that and realize I can use the good part of that that says there is more and there's a better way to do it, but I have got to balance it with where I, what I've done, what's already come, because if not, there's always that feeling of shame. There's mm -hmm. always that feeling of not enough. That is a horrid way to live your life when you're out there striving to work so yeah. hard. Yeah. And so um, I just encourage you as a fellow uh, three. Three. <laughs> okay. that makes sense to me that you're three that but that's also encouraging because um just don't wait 20 yeah. years to do that do it yeah. now if you yeah. can. right but with any of the numbers on the enneagram if you, or with any strengths finding with anything there's the good and the bad side of everything the part that pushes us and the part that pulls us mm -hmm. and relearning to kind of capture every thought and try to look at it remember that that conversation that we started this with look at the building from different places. Everybody's mm -hmm. got a different view. You can be the one with a different view. Sometimes yeah. I ask myself, what would a one say if they looked at this? What would a <laughs> nine say if they looked at this? Because yeah. That gives you the different view. Yeah. It's one of the reasons it's good to have you looking at it from a different there's, there's lots of good reasons to have Jeremy on the book, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it is good to be able to sometimes see it. Yeah. You know, because I can promise you, Chandler, the way you see you and the way you see your work could be different than the way Jeremy sees you and sees yeah. your work. And it could be different th from the way the client sees you. Client sees, and, sees yeah. mm -hmm. and sometimes we have to realize we think that our opinion is the only one. And it's not. It's not. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So let that help you instead of put you under shame and condemnation or depression or less than like that talk's not constructive. Yeah. That's ultimately not going to be, that is not gracious filled talk. That is not talk of life. That's, that's words of death. And yeah. that's not what you need to climb the staircase. That actually is going to push you down the staircase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's change that talk and move to the good side of the three on the Enneagram. Yes. Yeah. Most days I'm there, but there are days that, days that I start, the, the negative self-talk is strong, so. It is very strong. I think, er, I think every one of them has a negative self-talk. It's just the talk is different. Yeah. What, what it's saying to them is different. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing to do is the faster you can be aware of it and realize these patterns of thought or patterns of behavior, you can capture it and ask yourself, is this true? Is this right? Do mm -hmm. I need to act in this or do I need to shift the way I'm thinking? So mm -hmm. just being aware of it is huge. Yeah. But don't wait until you're in your fifties. Yeah. Enneagram, Enneagram has been, I did strengths finder, strengths finders with my old job and um, the whole company did it and it was good, but I was also, I think I was 21 when I took it and was, I think I know myself so much better now. I think it'd be good for me to go back and do it again. But um, the Enneagram has been a game changer for, for both of us in understanding, oh, that's why I'm thinking that way. And, um, that's not how, like you said, that's not how everybody thinks. Um, that's right. Cause I used to wonder when I was younger, why did they not see what I see? Like yeah. I how you don't see that is so <laughs> scary to me. Yeah. 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 Well, and back th to say this real quick, Strengths Finder might also be something really great to, to give as an assessment in the hiring process, mm -hmm. especially if you know what types of strengths would be necessary for that particular job. It's yeah. just something, it doesn't, it's certainly not a, if you don't have it, I'm not going to hire you, but it's just more information. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you got some things to go do and yeah. some, some, some fun, th you probably now have something to celebrate. Yeah, we should celebrate oh, yeah, something. We'll I think you should celebrate. Celebrate something. <laughs> Yeah, I bet, I bet if you guys just stop and go have lunch, you can already look back and say, what could we celebrate from right. January to now? One could be that you've survived through COVID. Survived. <laughs> no so doubt. Far. I mean, seriously. So Honestly, There's a lot to felt like this has been the, such a weird year, but there has been so much 
good for both of us. I think that's come out of, and for our business, that's come yeah, out of. And the cool thing is, the more you watch for it, and the more you see it, the more you see. Yeah. I heard one time Beth Moore made the comment, we see little because we see little. Mm. If you want to see much, you got to see much. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage you to not see little. Yeah. It's good. Thank well, you, Michelle. It's you are so welcome. Just a really, I think, refreshing challenge, but also a reminder for me and the way that I see our business and see our goals and see where we're at. So. Well, and I love that you were willing to share that the challenge is not, not what some might perceive as huge, but it's that middle challenge and, and that we need to yeah. see it. Yeah. It's all the little things. It's all the little pieces. Like, you know, as they say, and sometimes it's like hurting cats, it's all the little yeah. stuff, but mm -hmm. that stuff has to be done for you to take the next step. So mm -hmm. thank you both for coming on and sharing that. I enjoyed the time with you today. Me too. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank it's you. always so good to talk to you. You too. Take care. Thanks. Thanks to Chandler and Jeremy for joining today and being so open and honest about their challenge. Such a great conversation. You heard us mention it more than once, but this is exactly the type of work that we do in the designers inner circle. We focus on scaling, growing, and how that looks and works for each individual business. Come join us. We would love to journey with you. You can find out more at scarletthreadconsulting.com under the work with me page. Keep pushing forward and make profitability in finances and decision making a priority because profit doesn't happen by accident.